For this new journey into the heart of different cuisines from faraway places, I'm in Sri Lanka, a country I know well, having been here many times, both before and after the tsunami. This time, it's quite different because the conflict that had lasted for decades is over. A few dozen kilometers from India, Sri Lanka possesses fertile land and has carved out a strong identity for itself. I'm south of the capital, Colombo. I didn't want to go to the big markets. I'd rather go and discover the countryside markets, such as this one in Hikadua, which leans against the railway line that runs along the western coast of the island. To get a better understanding of how it functions, I contacted Peris Anuruda, a Sri Lankan friend who studied in Europe. So Anur said to meet by the tuk-tuk stand, and there he is. Hello, Anur. Hello, how are you? Good, and you? Yeah. So, these famous markets that you spoke to me of? Yes, this one. That's why I wanted to meet you here. Where are we exactly? In fact, we're 100 kilometers to the south of Colombo, and this is the central marketplace of Hikadua. It's a market that takes place every Sunday. You see, all the Sri Lankans come on a day like today, a public holiday, and if not a public holiday, then a day of rest. Because today's Sunday? Of course, it's Sunday today. In any case, the Sri Lankans work also on Sundays, but today is special. The whole village, here and now, is the time when everybody comes to the market. Would you say this is a typical market that you could find anywhere in Sri Lanka? This is rather a big market, but you can't compare it to a European market. It's really typically Sri Lankan. Last thing before we part, this island's really rather fertile. Could things grow here in Sri Lanka that we'd possibly find here in the markets? You'll find everything, almost everything. What I'm going to do, Anna, is leave you for a while because I know you have to do your shopping. I have my bag with me. And I'm going to walk around and we'll catch up later. OK, see you later. See you later. Most of the markets sell their own produce. Some supply the wholesalers, but that's rare. So I've just entered the markets, and I can already see that there's a lot of fruit and vegetables that I'm not familiar with. There are quite a few people already. It's not too late. I'm in front of a display that I find a little intriguing because I've come across this a few times now. It looks like both stones and eggs. However, I know it's a fruit. Hello. Hello. Tell me, what's this fruit? What's it called? And where does it grow? The wood apple grows near Ratnapura, in the center of Sri Lanka, in the area of the precious stones. Can you explain to me where this fruit grows? This fruit grows on big trees like that. And the fruit is, as you can see, kind of big nuts with very hard shells. They're not easy to eat. I've noticed a lot of this fruit in the market. People seem to love it and eat it a lot. Why, does it have vitamins? Can you show me what it's like on the inside? Sri Lankans love the wood apple a lot because it has medicinal properties, especially for the intestines. To eat them, you mix the pulp with water and sugar, but you can also eat it plain with just a little sugar. I'll show you. Oh, yes, you actually have to break it, like with a coconut. Yes, it's a real shell. Oh, it's got a strong smell, and if I've understood right, it doesn't taste like it smells, right? Thank you. After this early morning culinary experience, it's time to discover the first recipe, Sri Lankan curried chicken, and the ingredients required to make it for four people. To start, our culinary chef Wasantha cuts the chicken. 
He saws off the feet. The remainders will be used in another dish. Careful not to shatter the bones. Then it's the onion's turn. He peels, then cuts them in chunks. He also cuts green peppers into little strips. Wasantha peels the ginger, then dices it. Sri Lankan ginger is much stronger than ours, which doesn't stop our chef from preparing rather a lot of it. The garlic is diced. Now for the tomatoes to be chopped up. Our chef crumbles a cinnamon stick, which is produced on the island. And now let's cook this Sri Lankan curried chicken. He pours a little oil in a pan while it's very hot. He throws in some curry leaves, which could be replaced by bay leaves. Then cardamom, cinnamon, and two or three cloves, ginger, diced garlic, and the onion. He leaves it to simmer so that all the flavors mix with each other, giving it an aromatic base. A soft bed now awaits the chicken pieces. It's time to move on to the casserole. It has to be well blended with the herbs and spices. After a good five minutes, he adds the powdered spices, leaves it all to simmer. Vasantha adds a bit of salt and pepper for flavor. After five more minutes on a medium heat, he pours in coconut milk. Here it's fresh, but you can find it in the exotic aisle in your favorite supermarket. Pour enough in so that it practically covers the chicken. He adds the chopped up tomatoes, and then it's left to stew for 10 minutes. Just before finishing, for those of you who like it spicy, as they do here in Sri Lanka, you can add chopped hot peppers, according to your taste, and according, above all, to your capacity to survive it. All that's needed now is to garnish this dish, which is not only exotic, but also tender and fragrant. It's served with rice, which is the staple of this country's cooking. You could consume Sri Lankan green tea with it, especially if you were heavy-handed with the hot peppers, and that will avoid wasting good wine. It's now peak hour in the Hikadura market. The land is very well irrigated by the monsoons in Sri Lanka, and the sun enables the growth of fruit and vegetables everywhere on the island. For the 21 million inhabitants on this isle, feeding themselves is not a problem. Oh, there he is. I see my friend. He's talking over there. Oh, no. He's in the middle of a conversation. Tell me, Anur. Sorry, sorry, you were talking. Sorry to disturb you. I, I see that you're in front of the spices. They're very present in Sri Lankan cooking. We've seen many used in the previous recipe. What are we looking at, for example? We saw that earlier. That's a form of yellow powder. That's what gives it the yellow color. We make and use a lot of yellow rice in Sri Lanka. You add just a little bit. It's enough for five kilos of rice. Or equally, there is this curry mix. That's a powder, it's called curry powder, where it's all mixed. If you want to add that, it gives a good taste instead of using lots of spices. It's very good for curry chicken and things like that. That, for example, is very typical here in Sri Lanka. It's a powder, but it's actually rice. It was cold pressed and it's now a cereal. Here, people eat it for breakfast, mix it with coconut and a sprinkling of sugar, and it's eaten as a cereal. That over there looks to me like. Uh... That's very hot, it's chilly. Did you want to buy something? If you like, yeah. That, for example, is curry powder. Now, even if you don't know a lot about Sri Lankan cooking, with this, you can become a cooking genius. 
ça peut, ça peut déjà devenir un génie de... Oh, merci beaucoup. Oh, thanks a lot. You mean I don't know how to cook? Uh, now you can. <laughs> See you later. I'm going to have a walk around. I leave Anur by the spices. I'll meet up with him later. So close to the Indian Ocean, I was a little surprised not to have seen any fishmonger stands as yet. I didn't have to search for long. As Sri Lanka is obviously an island, there's no lack of fish. Ayubo Wan, hello. Were these fish caught today? No, these were fish yesterday. I brought to the market this morning. What types of fish do you have in your stall today? Quite a lot of white tuna, little skipjacks. There's also a small fish that we call the flying fish because it jumps out of the water. We think it's flying. There's also small fish to fry. We love that in Sri Lanka. We fry them and eat them with lemon. We also eat them on special occasions, a little like when you have snacks and appetizers. We drink alcohol with them. Is fish expensive? Fish is affordable, but the prices vary according to the sea conditions. Today is Sunday, and there are lots of customers. I'll earn some money today. The fishing community was amongst those worst hit by the tsunami, already because so many of them lost their lives, and also because fishing was dangerous for many months afterwards. Since they've gone back to the sea, and life goes on. We'll now leave the markets for another recipe, a fish recipe this time. Deviled swordfish fillets for four people. To start, here are the ingredients. To start, our chef finely slices the fillets. You can use white tuna, swordfish, or any firm flesh fish. He peels and chops the onions. Same treatment for the garlic. Basantha then peels the ginger, which has its place in many Sri Lankan dishes. He chops it up. He slices the leeks diagonally. And then he slices the two tomatoes. And same thing with the green chili. All the ingredients are ready. The chef heats up the oil. It's important to respect the order of ingredients placed in the pan. This dish could also be made in a wok. It's the curry leaves that go in first. They perfume the oil beautifully. He adds the garlic. The ginger. And the onion. He mixes it all together and leaves it to simmer for two minutes. He puts in the slices of fish, which are the stars of this recipe. He sprinkles it all with chili pepper. Be liberal with it. and then the curry. Throws in a few cinnamon sprigs, and then gently mixes it all together. He seasons it with salt. He lays out the slices of tomato, the green chili, the leek leaves, and the tomato slices. To finish, he pours some lime juice over it to give it an acidic tang. The chef prepares the plate.
He places the fish fan-like around the huge portion of rice. The ideal way of eating this is in a living room such as this, with a view of the Indian Ocean. Here we are again in the Hikadua market south of Colombo. The morning's drawing to a close and there are still many customers. Certain stalls sell only a few products, others are very well stocked. We find, for example, many types of bananas. Here different bananas are displayed sparingly like this. They're preserved in a good state. Ayubuan. Hello. Tell me, what are the, I have the impression that there are different types of bananas. Could you explain to me the difference between the types on your stall? They're different. This first kind is considered rather common, not expensive. And this second kind looks the same, but has a sweeter taste. What's the difference between them in taste? That's easy. Let's say there are three types of bananas. The first two have a sweet taste, and the third is used in cooking and is served as an accompaniment, and the two sweet ones as dessert. Could you cut me off a bit? Could I try one? Could you give me a sweet one so I can taste it? Thank you. Is it good? Mm. Mm. Delicious. Here's a pleasure that supermarkets don't offer, the possibility of tasting. And Mr. Sinya Ting allows me to try the bananas, all three types. They're good and nourishing, a real pleasure. So it's with a full stomach that I catch up with my friend, Anur. Anur is among the vegetables. So, Anur. You OK? Yes. <laughs> Tell me, in Sri Lankan cooking, there's a lot of rice, but also a lot of vegetables. Yes. So what do we have here? We have leeks, tomatoes? Yes, tomatoes. There is everything here, especially chunks of chilli, green chilli. We use that a lot. That's a type of eggplant, both of them. That I think you can find in Europe but the other is typically Sri Lankan. That is called chariot. That's eaten a lot by the Sri Lankans because it hinders diabetes. What's that? There you go. A kind of wrinkled cucumber. It's not a cucumber, that's chariot. It's quite strong, but it's eaten because it's so good for fighting diabetes. I saw there are lots of herbs used in the cooking, as we saw earlier in the recipe, for example. I see over there, there you go. That interests me because we saw earlier in the curry recipe fresh curry leaves, and I'm not quite sure what they look like. But this is a very typical thing in Sri Lanka, banana leaves. That I know. I'll show you this. That's the famous curry leaves. It's generally put in the oil when you're preparing the dish. It's then removed and that fights cholesterol. It's eaten in almost every meal in Sri Lanka. I'm going to walk around some more and we'll catch up later. See you later. I'll find Anur again later because I'm now meeting up with a Sri Lankan family for a traditional recipe. For this traditional fish-based recipe, I'm further south of the Hikadua markets in a little village called Huda on the southwest coast of Sri Lanka. We're in the house of Aryawati. This Sunday morning, she is preparing for her family an ombul tiyal, a fish-based meal using the skipjack fish. She's also using a pile of spices, pepper, curry leaves, as well as green chili, cinnamon, a tamarind paste, rice and salt. She starts by cutting up the fish that were just caught in the nearby Indian Ocean. She removes the head and fins and guts it. She cuts it up into steaks and then cuts it into smaller cubes. She rinses it in water several times to make sure it's clean. She also rinses the chili and curry leaves that we saw before in the other two recipes. 
She prepares the spicy paste. Ariawati lost everything in the tsunami of 2004. An association has helped her find new housing. She grounds the pepper against a stone that she's wet with water. She adds two teaspoons of strong chili and grinds it till it's a fine paste. She reuses the water from the stone, wasting nothing. She then adds three teaspoons of Garcinia. It's the tamarind paste that adds the acidity and helps to preserve this dish for up to five days once cooked. She adds both the salt and the curry leaves. She cuts the green chili and finishes by crushing the cinnamon. She then mixes everything together. Then she puts the fish pieces on top. Ayurwati has always cooked with a fire that she makes herself by burning coconut leaves. It's quickly done. She lets it cook for 20 minutes. This recipe of acidic, spicy fish is a classic. Fish is still affordable on the island. It's cooked quickly, and with a little imagination, there are a thousand ways of preparing it. The family sits to eat, and it's obviously a success. And having tasted it, I can confirm that it's excellent. I return for the last time to the markets at Hikadua. I can see that even far from the capital, the little villages are well supplied and that the Sri Lankans who cook have an incredible diversity of ingredients at their disposal. Don't believe that rice is your only hope of eating in Sri Lanka. That's far from the truth. Anyway, Anua has proposed to meet him by a stall near the entrance of the markets. He wants me to try a few specialities. What's in this dish? In fact, that, for example, is bread. And in the middle are vegetables and fish. Oh, bread with a surprise. Sri Lankans eat that a lot. You feel well fed after. To make a good start to the day. Have a good start. So this is with fish? It's fish with mixed vegetables. A bit spicy. Not too much. You'll have a little spice. I'll try a little. No, it's not too spicy. Yeah, not too much, but I always find that not too much is still a lot. What else is there? There's also a pastry, also made with chicken and vegetables. How does it work? Explain to me how people eat here. Well, we eat with the family, and we don't use forks or spoons or any cutlery, especially in villages with the family. In fact, you wash your hands well before and after. Because when you eat with your hands, they say you taste it better. Because there is a connection between here and the brain. It's, it's what we believe. You mix the curry with the rice with what's inside. All the curry powders are used, and that gives it a better taste than when you eat it with a fork and a spoon. 
ça, ça donne un bon goût par rapport quand tu manges avec une fourchette et un cuillère. So eating with your hands is better. For us, the Sri Lankans, eating once with your hands is better than 50 times with a fork. Well, look, what I'm going to do is eat with my hands like the Sri Lankans. Thank you so much for showing me the market this morning. It was a real discovery. The people were really nice. Well, it was a pleasure. It was really nice. Thanks. So let's have breakfast. Huh? Yes, of course, with pleasure. So naturally, it's beside the Indian Ocean that I say goodbye to Sri Lanka and its savorous and faraway cooking. A word of advice, don't believe it when a Sri Lankan friend says that it's not too spicy. It is, that's for sure. As sure as the sun will come back tomorrow. Me too, I'll come back to Sri Lanka. Maybe. <laughs>